Did you see the shooting in Louisville happen this morning? You're probably not hearing too much about it because that's the way it goes. But it is amazing how good we've gotten at dealing with these tragedies. I don't mean dealing, you know, with any of the aspects that comes up every time, you know, that we could do to help stop them with different legal, administrative or therapeutic fixes. But I'm talking about in terms of how well we process them. A script followed to a T today. Because our only response, if you think about it, is the press conference. Phalanx of local officials. And we know the script. You got to get the intros right. And then you have your TPs, right? Thoughts and prayers. I just abbreviate it because they're just gestures, right? They end after being spoken. They don't actually happen. Not that people don't mean it in the moment. I can't believe anybody likes these. The problem works well for people on both sides of the aisle, but I don't think they like it. It's just better to have the problem than to really try to solve it. So they're not going to do anything that might be motivated by actual thought about the problem or praying for how to help. Isn't that just the truth? Was today any different? And I don't blame the people in crisis. I don't blame you. You know who I blame? What has two thumbs and could do better? This guy. It gets added to my personal inventory of why I suck. Because I have a platform. In fact, I have multiple platforms. And if it were my family, I would likely be obsessed. And while I talk about us being interconnected, at the end of the day, I just play along like the rest, don't I? I guess doing this open makes me a little unusual, but meh, back to the presser, because we now have to make sure we say we did what we could. So then we go to the timing, first responders, whom we say we love and respect, and yet we send them into hellscapes like today in Louisville so often that they have to train on it and can now stop a shooter in minutes. And they have to, because we exist in a twilight zone, my brothers and sisters, where we say we can't do anything about something that happens here more than anywhere else in the world, and we know exactly why. And while we all say we want to keep people more safe, we can't even get our schools secured because that plays into the idea of more guns. More guns, more bad. Unless you're on the right, then you say more guns, more better. But neither is true. And if we're ever going to get rid of guns, that's not going to happen. So you can't even have guns in the places that you need them because you don't want that many guns, but nobody's going to get rid of what they have. And they really don't want more restrictions because those are only to hurt the good guys, not the bad guys. So all we have are the cops. And you'll hear that police saved lives. Not that that's a real goal. Come on. As we discussed just a moment ago, it's almost always true, right? Minus a Uvalde here and there. The cops are all we have, and they do amazing things. Shouldn't have to, but it's the way it is. So we then go to the thanks for how well state and local work together. Got to get that, right? My friend told me today, this was actually his idea, by the way. He said, you know, they're starting to sound like Oscar speeches, where everyone gets congratulated for a problem we do nothing about. Then you have to deal with the dead and injured. Now we're getting serious. And while they're not nearly enough here to warrant you seeing the likes of me being sent to Louisville, have to be um, certainly a more vulnerable site than a bank, right? Grade school, baby nursery, puppy mill, maybe. You'd have to have at least 28 people dead, at least. Dozens and dozens injured. Now, I must say, I used to go every time. But now, it's a numbers game. That's what decides the coverage. No big numbers. I'm sure that you're not even hearing a lot about Louisville anywhere else tonight. And again, I don't criticize the reality. I just can't believe that shame hasn't driven us to change it. Because that's the reality, isn't it? Hard to say. Oh, that leads me to the next element, which is do not say anything that suggests that we should be doing something about this because that's insensitive. Too soon. Too soon. Just stick with hashtag fill in the blank strong. And Louisville, I suspect, like most communities, is strong. And they will have to lean on one another. And they're going to have to do it because this is so senseless that it is heartbreaking. And it's almost overwhelming. And we're all going to move on. So they'll be left to deal with it. And they'll have each other. And I hope that's enough for them. But before we move on, we need to hear from the victims' families. And they want to tell us just how much was lost with this person. And how destroyed their family is. And they're telling you the truth. Maybe the only ones in the situation completely. 
and how the only thing that may give them solace is if they could do anything to make sure this doesn't happen to another person like their loved one or another family like theirs and how much they want change. And we will give them their say. But that's all we'll give them. Now, here we have injured cops and we have a governor who has a personal connection to one of the deceased. So the governor is going to speak to that and his connection here to the community and to one of the deceased. And this will bring it home in more ways than one. And the governor in Kentucky is a Democrat, but he's still in Kentucky. And that means while he does seem personally moved by this, he will defer to the personal pain and not really make the mistake of discussing any sense of putting that pain to purpose here again. I'm not taking a shot at the governor or any of the local officials, and not because I'm afraid to, that's my job, but because what else can we expect from them? Their constituents aren't asking for change, certainly not in Kentucky. There's more of a pride in holding the line against this perverse perception of infringement of rights. Oh, and then you have the other parts, because it's not just about the gun, right? That's just the tool. What about this messy matter of HIPAA compliance? And all the pushback you get on the left about messing with people's personal privacy if you try to force them to get help or you want to know what kind of help they're getting before they can get a gun. Oh, no, you can't do that. Can't do that. It's personal. It's personal. In fact, it's one of the only things that the two sides agree on. Oh, no, 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 don't mess with it. doesn't matter how crazy somebody is. Don't mess with their right to get a gun. Oh, no, we like red flag laws. Oh, yeah, look at the states that are trying to pass them. And look how hard and rigorous the debates are. Ridiculous. So what could we do? The assault ban, tough to assess. It was in place about 10 years. You got to look at the research. It's not an easy read. It certainly didn't make anything worse. Now, I'll tell you what works. Restricting high capacity cartridges, you know, any ability to have a lot of ammo. OK, uh, you look at the states where they've done that. That seems to help. But it also seems to really piss off the NRA fans because they want as many bullets as anybody can possibly have, because that's what they may be up against. That's the thinking in the state of play. So that takes us to the shooter. Even though this is not in a school, the shooters almost always check some or more of the following boxes. On the younger side, teens, early 20s, uh, more often than not, white male, right? I mean, almost always, will have been noticed by one or more people that have recently been self-isolating, spiraling, resisting treatment, forgetting treatment, stopping treatment, and the same with medication. And more likely than not, they will have some type of reference, psychological or emotional struggle. But when the shooting first happens, that's not what you're going to hear. What you're going to hear is from people who knew the shooter and are shocked. Because one, they probably weren't that close to them, at least in the moments immediately before the shooting. And those are the people who you're going to see on TV, right? They're shocked. This was a good guy. He loved football. He had some concussions playing, but he's nice. He's a good guy. He's the last person I'd ever imagined. Well, that's the only person you're going to see in the immediate aftermath. Why? Because the people who did know, the people who were close, they are racked with guilt, even though they don't deserve that guilt because they were likely all but powerless to do anything about it. My staff, the team tonight, wanted me to have a couple of people on who worked with this shooter a year or so ago, and one of them knew one of the deceased. And they say exactly what I told you that they would say. Shocked, never thought he'd do anything like this. Seemed like a great guy, loved hanging out with him. Does that really advance your understanding of anything? Isn't that always the case? Right? Why? Because this is a complicated and layered problem. Nobody's running around with a gun over their head saying, I can't wait to do this next Tuesday. And people then ignore it. It's more subtle than that. We don't recognize it in our society. It's stigmatized. These people hide. So no, I'm not having them on tonight because they, that's no surprise to you. It doesn't increase your understanding. Oh, but that's the script, Chris. That's who we have on. The people expect it. Forget the expected. Does nothing for us. You don't need some hollow reassurance that this guy, he was just a shock. Because we need to believe he's not like us, right? It's not like you don't have someone in your family who could be like this, right? It's not like it's not more common than not, right? We don't see that in the gun violence numbers, right? What, remind me, what's the number one gun crime? Oh, yes, yeah, suicide. But let's not deal with it. Let's not deal with it. It can happen anywhere. 
any family, any community. We're all vulnerable. We see it. There is no one who is exempt and nowhere. Same weaknesses, same blind spots. And of course, unless it's a gang related issue, AR-15, ka -ching. And every time one of these happens, you know what happens? People run out and buy them because they're afraid they're going to be restricted. And they load up on ammo too, because you may restrict that. How crazy that nobody can do better than we're doing right now. And you know, you'll get into these semantic battles about the Armalite rifle, whatever you want to call it. Well, there's so many automatic rifles. Where are you going to draw the line? Even though you look at the stats, you don't see a lot of people hunting or sport shooting with this rifle. It's not known as a great weapon. And it's not like your best choice for self, uh, you know, home protection. Certainly not my choice. But they love them for these mass shootings. And there's going to be a good chance that this person got the weapon legally. Or got it because someone else who got it legally didn't know how to store it. Or secure it. And then the last piece are the cumulative stats. So embarrassing. You know, politicians are so up for convincing you that everybody hates us and that we stink in every way. And they're wrong, they're lying to you because they're trying to play to division. But let me tell you, the world does scratch its head. 146 mass shootings this year, nobody's close. Nobody's close. That's from the Gun Violence Project. That's another problem. You know, we're not crazy about measuring this problem. We don't go out of our way to measure this, by the way. Why? We don't really want to know because we don't want to deal with anything. We, we don't want to deal with it, right? So, and a mass shooting, we play with different definitions. Isn't that funny? We spend more energy on the idea of a, what a mass shooting is than on fighting them. At least four people, three people, two people, depends how many people, who was injured, do you count the shooter, do you not count the shooter? That's what we spend our time on. It's only April. You know, at this year, time last year, we had 130. Now we have 146. Going for the record. 647 shootings last year. You're not going to stop all of them. But aren't you going to try to stop any of them? Because this, this is all set against the idea that no single law could have stopped this. And you're right. Never give a lot of weight to any single factor explanation to a complicated situation. All right? So why don't you just try to do everything that you can? How do you justify doing nothing? Well, Second Amendment. You know, 30, 35 percent of the country believe it's basically the most important thing in the Constitution. It's the most important thing any founding father ever said. This was their main thing. I can't believe it was second. I can't believe it wasn't in the preamble. Do a five minute Google search and take a look at the reality of the origination and orientation of that. It is nothing like what you make of it today, politically or practically. But that's where we are. And by the time Biden weighs in about how he and the first lady, Dr. Jill, feel about this and really hope the Republicans want to do something about it this time, story's just about moved on, hasn't it? And there are many of you maybe waiting for me to move on. I get it. 14 and a half minutes. Holy cow. Nothing else happened today. What matters more? I can't move on. And I don't know what to do about it. And I don't know how to move the needle. And it's not just about giving you information. You're drowning in information and perspective about this. And nothing happens. I've never seen anything like it. So I just take the occasion to remind how upset I am at myself for being so useless. We've never surrendered to anything the way we have to this problem. I've never seen us do less. And I'm not saying that there aren't plenty of regulations, but we're clearly not doing what we need to do to target exactly the kind of people that do the shootings we care about the most. I'll tell you what, I lived through the war on terror. And boy, did we change our laws, our tactics, our execution, our alliances. We fixed everything we could to go after that. And we made a difference. But you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I burdened you with this. I shouldn't have spent this much time. You know why? We'll be able to revisit it. And real soon. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com newsnationnow.com and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.